relax edition. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start in this seated position. And notice, where are your hips related to your shoulders, right? So for most of us, the hips are a little bit further back behind the shoulders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the flesh of the thigh and actually spin it. So you're pulling the flesh from the back up and you're pulling the flesh from the upper side, the inner thigh, rolling it under, okay? So do that on both sides. So you're actually literally gonna revolve the flesh of the thigh bone that way. Good, and you should feel like you have a little bit more broad surface area, a little bit easier to be upright. Now, let's go ahead and take left ear to left shoulder, soften both shoulders and relax your neck and jaw. And roll chin forward to chest. Do you feel tension in the sides of your neck when you do that? We're gonna get into that with some ball work today. So let's do the other side, ear dropping. Let the weight of the head drag across. And then again, chin forward to your chest. Big shoulder roll as you lift up, lengthening through the crown of the head. Think about breath moving into the uppermost lobes of the lungs. Take hands at your heart center. Bring to mind your intention for your practice, a mental foundation to guide your efforts today. And then I'm gonna have you release. And put your fingers, the first two fingers, on top of your collarbones. And then if you were gonna dig, if you were gonna sort of curl the fingers under, and don't go crazy with it, right? But just kind of, you know, put the fingers there and, and so you feel the collarbone, right? You can actually feel the roundedness of the collarbone. Your fingers right now are about an inch away from lung tissue. So that's how high up we have the ability to breathe into. It's interesting though, because when we breathe into here, sometimes it can create a little bit of feeling of anxiety. So I want you to just relax the hands for a moment, relax the shoulders for a moment and close your eyes. Can you allow breath to move into the collarbones? Right, so I didn't say draw breath into the collarbones. Can you allow breath to move into the collarbones? So instead of thinking big breath, think complete breath. Can you complete the breath as it moves into the upper lobes of the lungs without inducing a pushing, pulling, stretching, straining, holding, any of those forceful ideals? Can you simply create a little bit of space for breath to flow easy into the upper lobes of the lungs. And notice the expansion of the chest. And if you can't, it's okay. We will get into that a little bit more. All right, switch your feet. And we're gonna breathe a little bit differently before we get a rolling. <laughs> so we're gonna take the hands behind you and you're gonna try to stuff your thumbs back there so that they come close to the spine. So I round a lot to get my hands high, and then I'm gonna roll the shoulders back and squeeze the elbows just a little bit more toward one another. So just from this position, you might notice that there's a little bit of stretch in the chest and a little bit more ability to uh, puff your chest with your breath. So now we're gonna try to breathe into the thumbs more than the fingers, right? So the fingers are wrapped around your sides, the thumbs, are working toward your spine. So now we're gonna to try to bring breath into the thumbs and actually bring breath there so that it moves the thumbs. Is one thumb moving more than the other? Is one side of the rib cage a little bit easier to expand with breath than the other? If you're like a normal person, the answer is yes, right? We have a little bit of imbalance between the right shoulder and left shoulder and it affects our breathing. Also the hips. And then just release. Okay, we're gonna keep the hands onto the legs and I just want you to circle like a top, a spinning top. 
going around. Let the shoulders come involved. Let the head come involved. Roll it around. All right, so we're really doing this very different circular movement, so different than the movements that you do on a regular basis, right? So we're letting the spine just move with ease. And then other direction too. Circle it around. Kind of leaning forward, back, left and right. Playing with gravity a little bit, letting gravity help loosen things up. And then come back to center, pause once again. Remind yourself of your intention, see if anything has shifted for you. And then we're gonna come on over to a hands and knees position. And then we're gonna lay on our belly. So have Mr. Nice Guy handy. So we're just gonna come down so that the front of the hips are onto the floor. Elbows are underneath you and just sink for a moment, putting as much of you onto the floor as possible. So that means that the elbows still are under you. So you didn't move the elbows out so that you can slide your torso down. Elbows are right underneath the shoulders. So there's this sort of like propping up, right? But instead of rounding your spine and pulling away from the ground, see if you can hang the torso forward. And notice the structures that are starting to uh, move, maybe for the first time all week, right? Maybe for first time all day, right? Just see if you can notice what's happening in the back. Should just feel easeful. I like that word that I've made up, my latest yoga word. <laughs> right? So full of ease. And then go ahead and come up. And you're gonna pick yourself up now a little bit. So instead of sinking your chest, you're gonna pick yourself up and you're gonna slide the ball to where the, um, the rib cage comes together and then you're gonna move the ball just in front of that. So we're not actually at that intersection of where the rib cage comes together. We're a tiny bit higher. Now, elbows are still underneath you. Press the elbows now, down now. Press the palms down now. And think about lifting the very crown of the head up and away from the ball. And just see if you can notice. This is sort of like a, a propped up sphinx or a propped up, uh, um, what is it, uh, cobra pose, right? So it shouldn't feel like you're squishing your guts, right? So we're closer to the chest than the belly, right? So you can always slide back a little bit if you feel like it's underneath your guts. So it should not be on your stomach. It should be like right on the very start of your breastbone. And then you're lifting your chest up. Okay, so I'm taking a while talking you through this because it takes a moment for this stuff to work. So just hang out for a moment. Think about lifting the back of the head to lengthen the, the back of the neck. A few more rounds of breath. Can you breathe into the upper lobes of the lungs? Can you breathe into the upper back with ease? And then take the ball out of the way and rest your head on your hands. So put your forehead down and take a deep breath. Can you feel the breath moving easily into your lower back now? You've created space for that breath. and then take your time to come up. We're sticking with this big purple ball. And we're not gonna be here long. This is not um, the most fun position to be in. We're only here for two breaths. Instead of having the ball really high, we're gonna take the ball really low. So very lowest part of your belly. So below your navel, there you go, you got it. And then you're gonna sit back and you're gonna squeeze your elbows toward your knees. Yep, maybe you can put your elbows all the way onto the floor. Squeeze the elbows toward your knees and look back toward the ball. We're only here for two breaths and that was already one. 
So just one more deep breath into your low back. And then come up slowly. Take that out of the way. Lift up to this kneeling position and notice the balance of the front and back body and breathe into it. Reach the arms up. Extend, extend through the sides. Spreading the fingers. Tiny little back bend shape, really just to lift the front of the hips. And then exhale, release. We're gonna take both hands over to the right. So when you take both hands over to the right, you wanna stack the left hand on top. Both arms are straight. And then sit back with your left seat, tapping your left heel. So stretch back. Okay, now keep the stretch in your side, but shift your hips, your right hip toward the right. So slide over a little bit. And just notice how that targets the stretch slightly differently. Head is supported by the floor. And then come on up, hands and knees, single cat cow, round and release. Notice the breath. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Both hands walk over, right hand glues on top of the left one, and then you're gonna lean your hips over to the right. Head to the floor. And then scoop your hip over to the left, like you're shortening the left side, lengthening the right side. And then coming back up, single cat cow, round release. And let's stretch it out to puppy pose, hands forward. Hips are gonna stay over the knees now as you melt the upper back. Come on up slowly, taking the knees underneath you. Okay, we're gonna come on to our back. Little Miss Naughty in between shoulder blades. It's a good time to pad this if you know that this is going to be intense for you. Just take a towel, right, or a thin blanket to pad the ball. Ball's going to be in the upper back, so in between the shoulder blades, just above the heart rate monitor line. Interlace fingers behind your head and let the head drop. Now I'm most interested in the base of the skull getting heavy in your hands. So instead of the top of the head tilting back, think about the base of the skull melting back as if it's just gonna get heavy. And then we're gonna stay here to breathe into the upper back. If you like taking small movements left and right, that's totally great. Otherwise you can just stay still and breathe into your chest. Let's pick, take the ball up one inch, just a little higher. And then notice breath as you settle into a spot. Notice breath getting easier to move into the lower back, right? So you should feel like a sense of ease in the lower back. If you feel like the lower back is contracting, right, if it's shortening or rounding or short or lengthening, right, if you feel that it's not in its natural position. Go ahead and make sure that your feet are firmly planted. You can take the knees together. That'll send a message to the low back that it's okay to relax. And then up just one more inch. So we're not on the neck, but we're pretty close. We're very close to the uppermost part of the shoulder. And then once again, feet together, knees apart, making sure that the low back is just completely relaxed. There's no tension there. Okay. 
and then angle off of the ball as little movement as possible to get there. Take the ball out of the way, extend both legs out, close your eyes and just pause here. Reach the arms a little bit wider, reach the feet a little bit wider. Take up some space. Okay, Mr. Nice Guy, the big purple ball. We're gonna use this for the lower back. So bend the knees, feet onto the floor. We'll lift the low back and take it onto the sacrum. So it's a lot further down than you think. First, let's draw the knees in. And it should feel like the, the ball's gonna shoot out from underneath you. Right, so instead of balancing on the ball, the ball should feel like it's gonna shoot out from underneath. And then you can take the knees wide. Yep. Maybe you can reach for your ankles. So this is kind of like a supported upside down child's pose, right? But you have the opportunity for your upper back to lengthen on the floor. Okay, so a little bit of movement, just a sense of play, right? I realize that we're balancing on a ball, right? So go ahead and slowly, mindfully, shoot your feet nice and wide. So we're doing an upside down straddle split. Hands can come onto the inner thighs or they can stay closer to the calf muscles. And again, see if you can lengthen the upper back. And just notice, is there a sense of gripping, holding, pushing or pulling? And make your movement a little smaller so that that's not happening. There's just a sense of opening up, a sense of lengthening, a sense of ease behind the movement. And then put your hands down onto the floor close to the ball. And you're gonna keep moving your legs away from you. They're still wide. Move them away from you. They're eventually going to come together. Take your time with this. Keep moving them away, away, away until eventually they come together. You're going to feel a little core work there. And then once they're together, lower the legs down. Let the ball move even lower than you think. And just pause here. Deep breath into your low belly, space for your low back. And then bend the knees, feet onto the floor, and let's just switch, swish, hips left and right. You can take the ball a little higher if you want so that it's more on the glute muscles when you swing left and right. Swing over to one side, hold for a moment. And then swing over to the other side and hold for a deep breath. And then come on out, ball out of the way, relax the hips down. Are you aware of your feet, the center of your feet, your ankles, the knees, the front and back, where the pelvis and the legs meet, the hips? Become aware of the base of the spine. Travel up along the spine, all the way to the base of the skull. Let the muscles of the face and the head soften. Notice that feeling of being grounded. Let's try to stick with that grounded sensation as we go for the small white ball underneath the right shoulder blade. 
So again, you can always pad this if you need some padding for the ball. I'm gonna show you where it goes. If you already know where it goes, you just do as little movement as possible to get there. So small white ball, right shoulder blade. So it's not on the shoulder blade, but it's pretty dang close. So in between the right side of the spine and shoulder blade. Now right arm extended straight up into the air and drag your right knee over to the left. So bend your right knee, right? So it's in a 90 degree angle. Use your left hand to tug the knee across. So you feel how that rolls you away from the ball, right? So right arm is extended up and alongside the ear. So the arm, the right thumb is on the floor, up and alongside the ear. Good. So take a deep breath. Imagine getting long. Draw length in your right side. Now reach your right arm slowly out to a T position. Maybe the fingers can stay onto the floor to do that. Reaching it slowly out to the right. Take your time, opening up the shoulder to get there. No rush. Don't push or pull, don't move through pain. If it's painful, you're gonna to have to move your hand away from the ground. That should take out some of the intensity. And once you feel like the right arm is all the way to the right, rotate your head that direction. Breathing into both sides, lengthening both sides. Unwind, release, ball comes out of the way. Relax your neck and your jaw. And just pause here and see if you notice a difference from the right eye all the way down to the right toes. Let's do the other side. So we'll take that little, uh, the little white ball left shoulder blade. So it's in between where the spine and the shoulder blade meet. And then once you feel like you're in a spot, you'll know. <laughs> you'll take the left arm up and alongside the ear. So it's extending long. Right leg is straight, left knee is bent and dragging over to the right. Use your right hand to help. So you see how when you roll the knee down to the floor, you move away from the ball, right? And then you're gonna start to slowly extend the left arm up and out to look over your left shoulder. It's working toward that T shape, but you're going really slow so that you don't overdo for your shoulder. Letting the neck roll with it. Gazing over the shoulder. Extend through the chest. Notice both sides long. slowly unwind and release once again ball comes out of the way as little movement as possible and settle the body and imagine a line of energy from your eyes down to the center of your feet
And imagine if that channel was open, you could breathe up and down it. Relax the back of the head. Let the lips part slightly. Imagine the molars of the upper palate of the mouth, the roof of the mouth, getting heavy. The tongue falling back to the base of the throat. A sense of space in the sinuses, around the eyes, around the nose. And just follow the breath. Begin to notice if the mind begins to get active as you lay here in stillness. And then notice what it feels like to complete a breath. Put your awareness in the completion of the breath. And let the breath last and linger. What does it feel like to complete a breath without a sense of pushing, pulling, grasping, or holding? Can you, for just a moment, step out of the way of the breath? Can you linger at the base of the exhale? Invite in small movement to your fingertips and your toe tips. And then rotate your wrists, rotate your ankles. Drop the head slowly to the right. Open and close the jaw once you arrive. Rotate other ear. Once the head feels as, as heavy as it's gonna get, open and close the jaw. And then sweep your chin toward your chest. Lengthen the back of the neck. Point your toes, reach your toe tips away from you. Stretch the arms up and alongside the ears. Notice the difference in your breath when you start to be, become more energized. How does the breath change? 
Breathe into the upper lobes of the lungs, remembering that breath moving easy into the collarbones. And then roll to the side and come up to a seated position with your eyes closed. And simply observe, don't try to name it, don't try to quantify it, just observe how the body and mind feel. This is your body's truth, not how the mind wants the body to feel, but how it actually feels today, right now. And see if you can find a way to make peace with that, whatever it happens to be. Meeting your body where it's at. Place your hands together at heart center and bow to the beauty and divinity within you. Namaste. Good. Ready for your nap, huh? <laughs> Saturday morning nap. That'd be nice.